Ah, okay, uh, nice to meet you. So my name is Giovanni. I also come from an academic background. I have a PhD and postdoc. Um, but now I'm working at a pharmaceutical art company, uh, GSK. And uh, yeah, I think it's good, it's good to see both of the world. So I think uh, academia can learn from industry and, and vice versa, also on data management. So to give you a bit of a background, uh, this is um, a diagram of the drug development pipeline. So the first step is that to identify the target. So uh, if you want to uh, develop a drug for a specific disease, uh, like for cancer, asthma, uh, if you first need to identify which gene you want to target, uh, which, which protein. And, uh, and then you go uh, forward to identify a compound, um, preclinical and clinical stage. Uh, so I'm in a department called Target Science. Uh, we mostly deal with the first part, so uh, target identification. Uh, identify that um, uh, we develop drugs toward the correct target. Because of, of course, if you, if you get all the way to the clinical phase and you discover that you were uh, targeting the, the wrong gene, then that's a lot of waste of, uh, of time for the patient as well. So imagine about uh, uh, 160 people in my department working on several, uh, se several lines uh, for um, um, oncology, uh, respiratory, uh, or for target identification. And um, so uh, this is usually a work that involves a lot of data integration. So uh, getting data from external sources, so from databases, from uh, publications, uh, but also from uh, uh, commercial data. And uh, um, putting this data together and try to, to get to an answer, is this gene a good target for this disease? Uh, by the way, if you want to know more about this, you may look at Open Target, which is an initiative in which GSK is involved. And uh, so uh, the company believes that uh, this is a pre-competitive space. So uh, some of the target uh, identification is done in an open source way. Um, yeah, so um, I'm within this target science department, I'm in a small group of three people, and uh, basically we are in charge of uh, data uh, integration um, for, um, for, for target identification. Uh, you may see us maybe as data champions. And uh, so uh, we have a, a strategy which is in, in three points, which is what I want to present today. So the first is about communication and data set expertise. So we uh, proactively go uh, and interview the people in the department and ask them, uh, which data are you using? Uh, are there any uh, bottleneck accessing the data? Uh, do you know that this other scientist in, um, in another line is, is using the same data? Uh, could you work on the same? Um, and then the second point is about data ingestion, data integrity, so this is what we classic data management is, so um, helping people uh, getting data set from um, public database, for example, uh, maintaining, uh, um, do, do all the data curations, um, the um, ETL process, and uh, maintaining um, uh, updates. Um, and, uh, and then the last part is about um, uh, technology support. So um, it's not enough to just put the data in, in a flat file somewhere. It's useful to have some uh, support to understand how to use it. So um, a data set can be put into a, into a database, for example, a different type of databases. You can have NoSQL uh, document databases. And, um, and this is what we do. We try to help the other scientists understand uh, uh, how to better serve this data and um, also maintain some databases. And um, yeah, so this is just a bit more detail on what I just said. So we have actually a measurable objective. Uh, so we have to do 10, 20 face-to-face -face interviews with the scientists. This must lead to a number of uh, data set problems to be solved. I think it's, compared to the academia, it's, it is more structured and uh, it helps to have a measurable objective. 
and uh, also about uh, getting data from, from outside source. It's a long process, some people do not appreciate it, that there are a lot of steps. You cannot just, you can just download the data set, but then what happens when somebody wants to reproduce your results? Uh, what happens if you want to create a new data from the same data set? So this is a long process and we actually work to help people understand that, uh, how to do it and, and the importance of it. And this again is about uh, uh, supporting multiple technologies because uh, it's um, if you if you serve your data right, and then you, you you can get much more of it from it. And that, that, that's it. It's uh, just want to help to thank uh, my manager Peter and, and uh, my colleague Subash, and then thank you all of you. So, basically now at the beginning, where well, we started last year, um, we try to be very proactive. So go to the researcher and ask them, uh, which data do you have? Uh, I think this is useful because um, people usually do not have time to, to think about data. And so I think there is a value added in, in um, uh, reaching out to, t to the people. And uh, of course now that people know us after one year and, and a bit more, uh, they also reach out to us and, and they just ask. Uh, so, <coughs> so we have a mixture of uh, data from public databases like, uh, I know, GTEx or Protein. Uh, uh, there is a lot of good data actually in, in, the, in the public domain. Uh, and then we have some internal data sets that are produced by other units or um, a previous project. And we also have some commercial data sets which are uh, um, uh, they are usually better quality. Um, Um, well, usually the data that we use is, is uh, in pub the public domain, so there it's, uh, we look at the license and usually you can use it also for, for uh, uh, private uh, processes. Um, uh, quite in commercial data sometimes, sometimes we also prefer to use public data set because uh, acquiring commercial data it's a whole process, so uh, to do the due diligence and to see that the company that is selling you the data is not uh, doing anything nasty. So it, it's a, it, it, we, we tend a lot of uh, we tend to use a lot of public sources. Yeah, this. Yeah. Um, I guess in the in your end, that you have better data. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, one thing, for example, Open Target is a good example because they, they Open Target is a consortium to which GSK participate. It was one of the funding members, but there are other companies. Uh, and um, this finances project to curate data and, and put it together, so uh, in, so that you have a single portal where you can s ask. Uh, which are good targets for a specific disease, or you search for a gene and, and uh, you get data fr from usually public dat data bases. And uh, I think this, this uh, has produced many uh, successful collaboration with, with uh, academia. Uh, yeah. Do you foresee any scenario where research 
researchers in our university will apply in the years came the funding to produce data as opposed <laughs> to the public domain or am I thinking? <laughs> I think that might want to take offline because we're out of time. Okay. okay. Yeah. Thank you very much.